A ball is dropped from a height h, okay, and strikes the floor with a momentum of p. The ball is now dropped from a height of 2h. Which one would show the new momentum? Now, a lot of learners are instantly going to say, well, we know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Okay, so what they would say is that because this height is double, they think the velocity when they get to the ground is going to be double. So they think the momentum is just going to be double. They, they, they'll think this momentum is just going to be double this momentum. And so they would have chosen D. But the velocity is not going to double when you double the height. It's not a linear or a direct relationship. The way we can tell is by taking this formula. We need any formula that has final velocity and distance or displacement. And that would be this formula. Okay? Now, we know that in both scenarios, the ball is dropped. So I'm going to make the initial velocity zero. So we're just going to end up with um, 2a delta x. If you get final velocity alone, we can see that final velocity has a square root when it comes to distance, okay? So what we, now, what we are now gonna do is we are gonna go look at this scenario, scenario one, and then we'll look at scenario two. Okay, so with scenario one, we can say final velocity is equal to 2a. Now the displacement for that one is just h. Okay, so there's scenario one, okay? For scenario two, the final velocity would be, remember the formula goes like this, like we saw over here. And so the final velocity would be square root of 2a. Now the displacement is 2h. And so if you had to go work that out, you end up with 4ah. Okay. So in scenario one, if we had to work out the momentum, it would be mv, so that would end up being m times that. In scenario two, your momentum, so this is for scenario two, this is scenario one, your velocity would be square root four ah. Now, we would like to know, they said that the original momentum was p, and now they wanna know what is the, what is the new momentum in terms of p. So we can just say, what is P2 divided by P1, okay? And so that would be um, M and then 4AH over M and then 2AH. Okay, now can you see that the M's cancel? We can also cancel these AH's and then yeah, because remember, even though it's in a square root, if you have square root six divided by square root two, that does become square root three because these can cancel when it's square root and a square root. So, okay, so what we are now left with is that P2 over P1 is just gonna be square root four over square root two, which is just square root two. So we can see then that P2 divided by P1 is gonna be square root two. What that means is that P2 is going to be square root 2 times larger than um, P1. If you're still feeling a bit unsure about that last part, then what we can do now is you can replace P1, which was this momentum, with P. Okay, so we can go P2 over P. Then to get P2 by itself, you can take that little P to the other side. And there we go. And so P2 is going to be square root 2 times p, and so the answer is b.